Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I got a little project I wanna work on in the garage today. This is actually an issue that I've been kind of thinking about for a long time. I did something kind of, well, half-assed uh, about a year ago and I've never really been happy with it and I've been thinking for a long time trying to figure out how I was going to deal with the issue and last night I was sleeping in bed and I suddenly sat up in bed and, and had a eureka moment I said that's how I'm gonna fix this uh, and I'm actually kind of embarrassed it took me as long as it did to figure this out but let me show you what the issue is you may recall when I moved into the house that basically there were these two lights in the garage and since this was gonna be kind of my workspace, uh, I needed to have a lot more light in here. And this just didn't do it. It was, it was fine for lighting up the garage so you can go out to your car and stuff like that. But it did not cut it in terms of being a, uh, a, a work uh, shop for my, uh, for my woodwork projects. And so I installed a bunch of these LED lights and kind of routed the power over to this electrical outlet here. This is the same electrical outlet that powers the garage door. And basically what I did is when I wanted to turn on these lights, I literally just plugged in this thing here. And it worked, but it's not really neat. And I've constantly been looking for a better way of doing it. And like I said last night, I think I figured out what that is. So today we're going to do this. Now, I'm going to run over to Home Depot. I've got kind of a picture in my head of how this is going to work. But I'm not sure exactly if I'm going to find specifically what it is that I'm looking for. So, uh, like I said, I've got an image in my head what I'm looking for. But I may have to improvise a little bit when I get there. So let's go to Home Depot. All right, I'm back from Home Depot, and as I suspected, uh, I wasn't able to find exactly what I needed, but I was able to improvise a little bit. The problem was with the switch plate. This is the switch plate. This is the thing that goes on front of the breakout box that has uh, the holes for the for what I want to put in there. Now, what I want to do is this is a uh, three gang breakout box, which means there's a uh, space in here to three hold three different. Uh, devices whether it's an electrical outlet whether it's a light switch in this case i wanted one light switch and two electrical outlets and uh, what i really wanted to do is have a switch like this and then two outlets like this next to each other and then find a single face plate like this that would uh fit that configuration of one switch and two electrical outlets they didn't have anything like that but what I do know is they've got these other kinds of outlets that do the same thing and they fit the same form. So I found a three gang breakout box, this faceplate that has this form of a hole in it. And so I got one switch and two electrical outlets. So I'm gonna put that into the box. We're gonna attach the box to this outlet here. And it's gonna basically stick up a little bit. I'm gonna run the wire through there uh, one of the outlets is going to be energized all the time because that will power this little extension cord thing that I have and the uh, garage door opener. And then the other one is going to run through the switch so I can turn it on and turn it off. And the lights for the, uh, for the workshop will be plugged into that. So what I can do is uh, when I want to, when I want to turn on the lights, I'll just come flip on the switch and the lights will come on. I know that sounds complicated, but it isn't really as bad as it sounds. So let's get going on this and put this together. Now before I get around and fish around in there and start doing things electrical, um, I'm going to refer to this handy little uh, lookup sheet I made a while ago to figure out which breaker it is. And this is the garage here and this is the outlet I want to kill, so I need to shut off breaker number 29. So. You know, like I said, safety first. So breaker 29 is that one. And that should do it. Now I noticed that, uh, that these lights were also on breaker 29 and they went out when I killed the breaker. So that's a good thing. I'm gonna put a little cable tester in there just to make sure we're safe. Uh, but I'm sure we've got this all, all uh, safely powered down now so we can get in here and work on it. Yep. No lights means no power, so we are safe. Let's tear into this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this outlet out because we aren't gonna use that one. We're gonna replace it with new ones. And I gotta get behind there to get at the wires anyway. So out this one comes. 
And basically that's pretty simple. It's just held in place by this screw and this screw. So I'll unscrew that, pull the whole thing down. We'll disconnect the wire and uh, work at it from, uh, from behind. All right, got that out. And uh, there's actually nothing wrong with that outlet. So I'm gonna put that aside. I can use that somewhere else. I got kind of a, a box of uh, electrical odds and ends that I can always refer to if I need them. But that's a perfectly good uh, uh, electrical outlet. So. Like I said, I'll just put that aside and we'll use that somewhere else. All right, now the wires that are in here are a little bit short because they're they're all kind of cut to the length of dealing with an electrical outlet that uh, the back of it is here. But now the back of the outlet is going to be down probably about this level. So what I'm going to do is I am going to lengthen those a little bit uh, so that I can have a longer chunk of wire coming through there to reach down to where I need to go. So I'm just going to use a couple of wire nuts uh, and extend the length of these wires uh, probably about 12 inches. I, whenever you do electrical stuff like this, you want to always cut your wire long because you can always cut it shorter. You can't cut it longer always. So uh, like I said, I'll put about 12 inches on here and then I can cut it to length when I get to the point where I'm ready to place it. All right, so this is a three gang uh, breakout box that I'm gonna use. This isn't actually the right thing for this job. This thing is actually designed where you cut a hole in the wall and basically you uh, drive this thing in there and it basically sits flush in the wall. So the wall would be like where, where my hand is right now. Uh, but they didn't have exactly what I needed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually mount this to the ceiling. Now there's that little uh, circle you see in the middle that I'm pointing at there. That thing punches out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wires through there. And then I'm gonna use two or three or four screws to attach it to the ceiling. And you know, it won't be pretty, but it's, a, it's in a garage. So, you know, it, it, it's okay if it's a little utilitarian. And it'll stick down about three inches, which will also make it a little bit easier for me to grab it and uh, reach up and hit the switch. So. Uh, like I said, it's not exactly the right right box for this uh, application, but they didn't have what I was looking for, and this will work. All right, so I've punched out the hole in the center. I've also drilled four holes here, 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 and here. And that's what I'm, what I'm going to use to attach the breakout box to the ceiling of the garage. And then I also attached... Uh, uh, heavy-duty drywall anchors here and I will and this is what I will screw into uh, to attach it to make sure it always remains nice and secure and snug to the roof all right so I got the uh, breakout backs uh, firmly attached to the roof um, got the wires hanging down through now it's just a matter of uh, wiring it all up and that's gonna be pretty easy I think I'm gonna do a lot of this down below because I can wire the three pieces together so then all I need to do is just connect this to one end and we should be good to go. So like I said, I'll do a lot of this on the ground because it's a lot easier if you do it that way. All right, so I got the basic wiring done. Basically what's gonna happen is the signal line will come in through here. This line and this line are connected together, which goes over to the switch. When the switch is off, nothing goes through to the other side, but when the switch is on, the power goes over to here. I have the white wire going from this side all the way over to this side and I have the grounds connected. So now all I need to do is just connect up to the system on the uh, on the ceiling and button it up and we should be good to go. And in this case, I've elected to put the switch in the middle. That just kind of made sense to me. All right, so I got the things kind of basically in there and wired up. Um, I'm not gonna button it up entirely right yet because I wanna do a test on it, make sure it works before I close everything up. I'm also gonna have to position the, uh, the uh, outlets and switches in there a little bit just to make sure that uh, they all fit in there because you know there's a given space between each of these and if these aren't perfectly aligned in there, uh, the faceplate won't cover up, but like I said, I want to test it first and the way you test that is to uh, Apply power to it. So let's do that. And this is what they call the smoke check I'll let you I'll leave it up to your imagination to figure out why they call it that breaker number 29 All right, well, it's encouraging that the light came back on because uh, if there was some sort of an electrical problem first off the breaker would have tripped and the light would not have come on so I got my little uh, my little uh, power tester thing here. This is the one that should always be on. 
and this should be the one that's controlled by the switch. So let's plug this on, plug this in, lights are on, and flipping the switch, nothing happens. That's what I expect from there. And then this is the one that's uh, on or off based on what the switch does. So flip the switch off, flip the switch on. Good, that appears to be wired upright. So let's get the spacing between the, uh, the receptacles uh, set up and close it up and hook everything up and let's make sure it all works. All right, amazingly enough, this was actually fairly close. These two were pretty much right on. This one needed to be adjusted a little bit, but they're looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna attach the four or the six little screws that go here and we should be done. Let's hook it all up and make sure it all works still. All right, I got all the screws in. Everything's plugged back in as normal. Um, I clearly have power on the little extension cord thing and on the garage door opener. So that's good sign. And uh, when I flip the switch now, the lights come on. So that is a lot better than having to go up there and uh, plug things in and unplug them whenever I didn't, whenever I wanted them. This is a uh, can be a lot wetter, better way to go. Now you might say, oh, why would you put it on the ceiling? Who can reach that? Well, I'm six foot four tall. So, you know, if, if that's a problem for someone else, they'll have to deal with it. But this is my house and I don't have any problems reaching up there. That is a, not a problem at all. So there we go. Got that all done. That was actually uh, fairly simple to do. Uh, cost me all of about 35 bucks at Home Depot. And mainly the big problem was these uh, style of switches are a little bit more expensive than the uh, traditional ones, but that's okay. It looks good and uh, works properly and we're good to go. So anyway, I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.